most recognized business news anchor, a keen observer of market movements. His analysis persistently accurate. You don't just have to read trends, you've got to anticipate them. Award-winning presenter Martin Sung on Asia Market Wrap. Weekdays on CNBC Asia. You're watching Trading Day on CNBC Asia. I'm Bernard Lowe in Hong Kong. Topping our news headlines on this Monday afternoon. Most regional stock markets are down, some way down, led by Hong Kong. We'll have a rundown. Moody's slashing the ratings of seven mainland Chinese government-controlled investment corporations. And South Korea announcing a big cut in rediscount rates to help financing at local corporations. Well, Hong Kong stocks, as we mentioned, are tumbling sharply today, and other Asian markets are going off in all kinds of different directions. The Nikkei is actually way up on hopes that the bank sector might recover. We'll have a rundown throughout this show. But first of all, here in Hong Kong, it looks like the uh, government's decided to stay out of the equities market after about a week and a half, two weeks of heavy-handed intervention. The blue chip Hang Seng Index was down by over a whopping 6% by the time traders went to lunch on this Monday afternoon, topping the losers list today, shares of HSBC Holdings, which were off around 5-6%. I'll have the specific numbers for you, the specific damage, just shortly. No sign of uh, government buying today after it intervened heavily in the market last week to squeeze out the speculators. Traders say the uh, selling isn't too bad, but uh, buyers are absent from the market. And anytime you have lots of sellers and nobody buying, obviously the index is going to tank. Investors are also waiting for a string of earnings due later today, most notably those from China Telecom, a huge cap stock, and Costco Pacific. Looking at the rest of regional blue chip shares, most traders bring stocks that are constituents of the Hang Seng Index above water last week. Well, joining us in our studio on this afternoon, kind enough to give up part of his lunch hour, Philip Chan. Philip, the head of research at Shenyan Wangal Research in Hong Kong. Philip, good Hi. to see you. Hi. Good afternoon. Did you expect this kind of uh, tanking? That's pretty heavy loss. I mean, I was watching the Hang Seng as it opened. It was down 5.5% five, five in the first five minutes of trading. Yeah, we, we actually expected it to be lower than this. Uh, we expected a, a bigger fall. Um, so there's... Uh, I think uh, maybe there will be limited uh, losses this today, but uh, we still expect the market to come down further. But I thought, um, I thought, I thought last Friday when the, when the August, uh, when, yeah. when everybody was yeah. going to head to head and there was a trade every one and three sure. quarter second, sure. um, I thought the uh, HKMA was managed managed to get rid of uh, the bulk of, uh, or at least a good portion of the speculators in the market. They've got, got they've got rid of a good portion, but uh, it's just that the the you're looking at valuation right in the market, and um, you know the. Um, even at 7,008, which is what it opened up this this morning, mm -hmm. uh, it was it's too it's too expensive um, based on let's say fundamentals which are changing, uh, you know that which are fluid. Mm -hmm. um, but you see the corporate earnings results in the first half were were pretty bad by most mo most major corporates, and they're expected to be uh, still not very good in the se second half, right? So you're looking for a major downturn in corporate earnings mm -hmm. next this year. Um, if you, if, and if you're talking about maybe a slight decline, if, if, if at best break even next year, then um, the valuation on the market is still a little bit high. Probably needs to come down below 7,000. Why do you think the uh, Why do you think the Hong Kong government is so nakedly absent from the share market today? Well, they they want to. They want. I think. I mean, I I can't sort of second guess their motives, but I think that they're probably uh, looking to see where it falls. The natural. Uh, sort of uh, decline leads to, and then they'll 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 sort of see what their tactics are after that. Well, now but we see exactly where the market yeah. is supposed to be if the government's not in there buying every two seconds. Um, I w well, we, we can't really say that the government's not in there, but uh, it's it's obviously they're not they're not they're not maybe they're not so markedly today. That's all. But um, uh, I th I think this is you know again this is just the first few hours after last Friday's um, really volatile trading. Um, I think we're going to have to see what the trend is over the next few days. And like I said, I think, generally speaking, it's down. 
Does this kind of tactic, I mean, obviously what the uh, monetary authority wants to do is keep the speculators guessing. Yeah. Are, is, this the way, is this the way to do it? I mean, wipe out the, uh, the uh, potential contract rollovers at the end of futures expiration, at the end yep. of the month, and then ease off a bit at the, at the start of the month? Um, it's one tactic. Yeah, it's definitely one tactic. But they do want to keep them guessing. Uh, and you see, one of, one of the major um, mistakes, or, or not, not mistakes, but I don't think that it was, vi it was w well advised to sort of actually announce you know, in mm -hmm. um, have a press conference um, to talk about what they were going to do. Um, admittedly, they didn't give details right about what they were going to do, but they announced that they were going to attack speculators. Yeah. Um, but I think that they shouldn't have said anything, if, if at all. One point I'd like to make um, is that the government, having spent uh, their es uh, estimates, they spent 15 to 20 billion yeah. U.S. dollars of their yeah. reserves, possibly up to a fifth of their foreign currency reserves. Now they're holding on to a whole basket of blue chip stocks, yeah. Yeah. five percent in the HSBC, telecom companies yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, looking at the way the Hang Seng has dropped today. Uh, the total portfolio of their foreign yeah. exchange reserves has just uh, yeah. gone down the drain by a, a substantial amount. Isn't this kind of a bad move in terms of uh, safety on the, uh, on the on the dollar peg? Not really, no, no. But you see, the thing is, they're, they're, what they're trying to do is to dry up the, uh, I mean, basically take out any potential sellers there are. I mean, part of the strategy is they, they've taken out all of the, the liquidity in those stocks, right? Mm -hmm. uh, in the sh at least in the short to medium term and any potential sellers right, by, by doing so. And therefore, it's harder for um, short sellers or speculators mm -hmm. to, to speculate because they can't borrow the stock from anywhere. Right? It's very difficult to get the stock, or it's going to be more expensive. Um, and um, therefore, that's the, the tactic, I think. Not, right. not, not really. I mean, valuation, probably in about two or three years' time, when we've got a recovery um, in, in the economy, then these valuations are going to look quite good. Right. Looks yeah. like they might be hanging yeah. on for two or three yeah. years' time. That's All right, right. Yeah. Philip, as always, good talking to you. That's okay. Have a good lunch. Sorry to <laughs> take you away from, from that, Sam, but we'll That's talk okay. to you again soon. All right. Great. All right. That's okay. We've been speaking with Philip Chen of Shenyin Wanghua Research here in Hong Kong. In other news, U.S. rating agency Moody's Investor Service cutting the ratings of seven government-controlled investment companies in mainland China. That includes Beijing's flagship business group, China International Trust and Investment Corporation, also known as CIDIC. The other six ITICs are controlled by the city governments of Shanghai, Shenzhen, Tianjin, plus those of the provincial governments of Fujian, Guangdong, and Shandong. Their foreign currency ratings were dropped to uh, drop a notch, rather, to BAA2. Moody's uh, agency also saying these companies are vulnerable because of their huge foreign currency borrowings. Foreign loans account for as much as three quarters of total funding in some investment trust corporations. South